What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in today's video we're going to cover once again the entire speaking section so take out your notebooks, grab your writing utensils, and get ready to take some outstanding notes. That's the independent speaking question we'll be going over today so let's read it together. At the real test when the computer is reading the question and directions to you out loud you should be skimming through the questions with your eyes and organizing the beginning sentence and two reasons. Please do not mind my dog that's barking downstairs. Anyways, the question is, you live in a very crowded city with only one green space, which is the city park. The government recently proposed to build a housing complex on this only green space. Do you think this is a good idea? Now, this question is very long and in our point of view, this is going to be a agree or disagree statement question, okay? So the statement is going to become the government should build a housing complex on the city park or on the only green space in my city. You can choose whichever statement you want to say and it's going to be mostly based on what you feel more comfortable with. All right, now I'm going to disagree with this statement. So I'm going to say that the government should not build a housing complex in this area. Now the first reason I'm going to say preserving the green space or the city park would be beneficial. And in the second reason, I'm going to say constructing a housing complex can end up being detrimental. Now, in the first detail, I'm going to talk about something along the lines of spending quality time with friends and family members in a place that's not not too polluted. And in the second detail, I'm going to talk about, um, well, actually, I'm going to make up something about my city. Why? Because the grader doesn't know exactly where I live. All right. So let's see how I put that together. In my eyes, the statement that the government should build a housing complex on the city park does not ring true to me. To begin with, the first thing that came to my mind as I read this question is that preserving the city park would be very beneficial. This is mainly due to the fact that doing so would enable the residents in my city to spend quality time with their loved ones in a place that's not too polluted. In addition, another reason that supports my opinion is that constructing a housing complex on the only green space can be detrimental. This notion makes perfect sense to me since there are already too many apartments and houses in my city, which means building more would be unnecessary. All right. Now, after my second detail ended, I took a look at the clock and noticed that I only had about one second left. The details that I used in this response were once again a little bit too long and the template might be burdensome for some of you guys as well. So if you think that you need to make some tweaks or maybe eliminate some words within my speaking template, maybe that's the better way to go. All right. Now, if you want to know exactly what those parts are, reach out to me. Let's work on it together and get the score that you need as quickly as possible. All right. So that was the independent speaking question. Let's move on to task two. All right, that's the reading passage we'll be looking at for the task two question and the reading passage is the announcement. Let's take a look at it together. The university administration today announced a $25 increase in the student fee for using the campus recreation center. Okay, so the university is planning to increase the fee to use the student recreation center by $25. That's unfortunate. Okay, so that's the beginning sentence. Um, let's see why. The higher fee which all students are required to pay will provide funds to upgrade. Okay, provide funds to upgrade the school facilities or the facilities on campus. Let's just paraphrase, make it simple. Okay, we're done with the reading passage. The beginning sentence. According to the announcement, the university is planning to increase the fee to use the Student Recreation Center by $25. The ending statement, if the person doesn't like it, even though the school believes that this decision will provide funds to upgrade the facilities on campus, the so-and-so opposes the university's new plan. Okay, so I'm rushing it through it because I want to get through this process as quickly as possible since we still have to listen to the conversation, but when you're speaking, Make sure that you're speaking steadily and at a pace that you can maintain without stressing out. Okay? All right, now let's listen to the conversation.
did you see this announcement in the newspaper? It sounds like a great idea. You really think so? Not many people even use the place. I know, that's the point. People don't go there because the facilities are old and the exercise equipment breaks down. I think the director's right that they get more use out of it this way. Right now, the place is usually empty, and that's too bad. Students can get pretty stressed out if they don't get some exercise. That's a good point. But doesn't it seem like a lot of money? It's not really all that much. If you figure a lot of people spend that kind of money on a CD or when they go out to the movies, this is just one charge for the whole year. That's true. And instead of some little thing, we get a recreation center people might actually use. Right. So considering the benefits, it's really not that much to pay. Yeah, I guess... Okay, so no reason to panic. I think for some reason the file got a little corrupted. Um, I could play it again, but I, I already have everything that I need to say. So let's go ahead and see how I'm going to put it together. Now, the man was the main character and he liked the university's new plan. So the ending sentence is going to change to, therefore, because the school believes that this decision will blah, 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 the man supports the university's new plan. Okay, now in the first reason, the man said, not many people go to the student recreation center or the campus recreation center because the equipment there is really old as a result right now this place is basically empty and students should exercise more if they want to relieve stress all right now in the second reason the man said that 25 dollars is not a lot of money because it's one charge for the whole year plus Students will get a campus recreation center that they actually like to use. So this policy will provide numerous benefits. Okay, so that's what I'm going to say in my sample response. Let's see how I put it together. According to the announcement, the university is planning to increase the fee to use the student recreation center by $25. And the man is looking forward to this. First and foremost, the man mentioned that not many people go to the student recreation center because the equipment there is really old. As a result, right now, the campus recreation center is empty and students should exercise more if they want to relieve stress. On top of this, the man also said that $25 is not a lot of money because it's one charge for the whole year. Plus, Students will get a facility that they actually like to use, so this new policy has numerous benefits. Therefore, because the school believes that this decision will provide funds to upgrade the facilities on campus, the man supports the university's new plan for these two reasons mentioned in the conversation. Ta-da! Okay, so after my second reason ended, I took a look at the time. Notice that I had 15 seconds, exactly the amount of time that I want. So I went ahead with the ending sentence that I'm prepared to use and uh, wrap things up at my own comfortable pace. Now, if I only had 10 seconds left, I would have just had to shorten the ending statement by saying, therefore the man supports the university's new plan, which is basically skipping over the second detail that I got from the reading passage. All right, now let's move on to the next question, task three. All right, that's the task three reading passage we'll be looking at today. So the topic is social learning. Let's look for the definition. Social learning is given to us, where is it? Okay, in the second sentence, sometimes called social learning, this type of learning involves the process of, okay? Involves the process of learning to copy or not copy, the action of another. Okay. All right, uh, let's keep looking. Um, by observing the results or consequences of another reason. Okay, so this is basically the same thing as All right, so this topic, social learning, is something very, very similar to observation learning because it's a, it's a type of learning that doesn't involve textbooks or printed materials and the traditional sit down at your desk and memorize facts. Okay, now let's listen to the lecture. Okay, so an example.
example to illustrate this. Uh, you often see this happen in families. Let's say there are these two kids, a sister and a brother. Uh, let's say the girl's six and the boy's four. And one day they're all out shopping with their mother and they're in the store and the girl sees a toy she wants. She asks her mother to buy it, uh, to buy the toy for her. But the mother says no. So what does the little girl do? She starts crying and screaming, <laughs> you know, mommy, I want it. And finally, mom gives in and says, okay, fine, you can have it, and buys the girl the toy. Now, don't forget, the little brother's there, and he's watching all this happen. And maybe he sees this sort of thing happen a lot, and his mother giving in when his sister cries and screams. <laughs> what do you think he's going to start doing when he wants something from mom? He'll probably cry and scream, right? But... What if the opposite had happened? The same mom didn't give in and didn't buy the girl the toy. In fact, say mom instead disciplined the girl for screaming and crying. When they got home, she didn't let the little girl watch her favorite TV program. Again, the little boy is watching. Now what's the little boy likely to do if he finds himself in a similar situation and he wants mom to buy him something? Chances are, He's not going to cry and scream, right? Okay, so what happened here was um, this marker, you have to press it down so that the ink comes to the uh, point where it needs to be. So I was uh, pressing it quite fiercely <laughs> to make sure that I don't run out of ink and that ended up being a distraction, but whatever, it's fine. Now, this was one example and I, I'm gonna say it was an example of children, okay? All right, now let's look over the lecture's notes. To begin with, a sister and a brother go out shopping with their mother and the girl sees a toy that she really wants. However, her mom says no and the girl starts crying. Consequently, her mother eventually buys the girl the toy. Therefore, because the young boy sees something like this happen a lot, he will also probably cry and scream if he wants something. On the other hand, if his mom disciplined the girl, his sister, for crying, the boy would not cry and scream as well. Okay, so this was an example that showed how a young brother, the younger brother, would look at the actions and behaviors of his older sister and the ramifications or the outcomes and pick up on what is acceptable or what would work, okay? What would be effective in any given situation. All right, now let's listen to my sample response and see how I put it together. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a specific example of young children to explain the concept of social learning. To begin with, a sister and a brother go out shopping with her mother and the girl sees a toy that she really wants. However, her mom says no and the girl starts crying in the mall. As a result, her mom eventually buys the girl the toy. Subsequently, because the young boy sees something like this happen a lot, he will also probably cry and scream if he wants something. On the other hand, if his mom disciplined his sister for crying, the boy would not cry and scream if he wants something. To sum up, this was a perfect example of social learning, which involves the process of learning to copy or not copy the action of another, given by the professor in the lecture. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Alrighty, so after my lecture summarization ended, basically before I said the ending statement, I looked at the time and noticed that I still had about 18 or 17 seconds left, which means I have enough time to say the definition. That's how you're supposed to manage your time when you're speaking. You gotta know how many seconds you have left before you start saying your ending statement because if you have too much time, then you should slow down so that you can eat away at the extra seconds that you have left. Whereas if you don't have enough time, maybe you should take out some of the stuff that you were planning on saying, okay? All right, let's move on to the last question, task four. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this question does not have a reading passage, so look at the board, get ready to take notes. I'm going to start the lecture in three, two, one, now. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Today, I want to talk about seabirds. Now, seabirds hunt and eat fish, and, well, their food can be hard to find because their food source is spread out over a large expanse of water. So what seabirds have done is that over time they've made adaptations. They've developed special characteristics that help them find food. One adaptation involves the length of the bird's wings. The albatross, for example, is a large seabird that spends most of its life flying over ocean waters in search of food, fish to feed itself and to carry back to the nest for its chicks. Now, most birds flap their wings up and down when they fly, which uses up a lot of energy. But the albatross has these special long wings that it can hold perfectly still. It's able to fly without moving its wings up and down. These long wings allow it to glide or float on the wind. And this uses very little energy. This is important because, as I said, the albatross has to cover a huge expanse of ocean to locate food, sometimes up to 1,100 miles a day. Because of its long wings, it can glide along over the ocean, using little energy as it searches for food. Another important adaptation of many seabirds is an acute, highly developed sense of smell. Take the fulmar. Like the albatross, the fulmar needs to find food that's scattered far out over the ocean. But the fulmar has a rather unusual advantage. It has tiny tubes inside the nose holes in its beak. And these special tube-shaped nostrils help it to pick up the scent of food. Now, this highly developed sense of smell is especially important because the fulmar's main source of food, plankton, are tiny organisms that are hard to see, but they give off a very sharp, distinctive odor. So when fulmars are flying around looking for food, they may not be able to see them, but they can find the plankton by smelling them, even from far away. All right, now, in the beginning sentence, I'm going to say the professor gave a lecture about how seabirds developed characteristics to find food or how seabirds hunt and eat fish, but I'm going to choose to say this one right here. Okay, now, in the first section, I'm going to skip over length because I don't have enough words to put together a sentence realistically. So I'm going to jump right over to the albatross, okay? To begin with, the albatross spends most of its life flying over oceans to look for food. Due to the fact that these birds have special long wings that they can hold still, they are able to glide and float on the wind instead of flapping their wings. I'm not going to say that. Therefore, albatrosses are able to use very little energy when looking for food, which is extremely important. Furthermore, Seabirds also have an acute, highly developed sense of smell. For instance, the fulmar has tiny tubes inside of its beak, which enable it to pick up the scent of its food. Hence, when flying around, the fulmar can find plankton simply by smelling them. Okay, now let's listen to my sample response. The professor gave a lecture about how seabirds developed various characteristics to find food. To begin with, the albatross spends most of its life flying over oceans to look for food. Due to the fact that these birds have special long wings that they can hold still, they are able to glide and float on the wind. Therefore, albatrosses use very little energy when they search for food, which is extremely important. Furthermore. Seabirds also have an acute, highly developed sense of smell. For instance, the fulmar has tiny tubes inside of its beak, which enable it to pick up the scent of its food. Needless to say, when flying around, the fulmar can find plankton simply by smelling them. In summation, this was how seabirds develop various characteristics to find food, which was illustrated by the albatross and the fulmar. Okay, now, I had 12 seconds left, but I decided to say which was illustrated by the albatross and the fulmar. I made it 
but as we can see, I only have 1.252 milliseconds left, which is a bit risky. So if you have closer to 10 seconds, I would recommend you skipping the which was illustrated by part and jumping right over to given by the professor in the lecture. All right. Those are the questions that I wanted to go over. Those were my sample responses. If you enjoyed what you saw, heard, and uh, experienced in the video, leave a like on the video, please. Subscribe to the channel if you still have not done so. Share the content with your close friends and family members if they need the extra assistance, but most importantly, if you are a self-disciplined and dedicated individual, reach out to me about my tutoring services. Let's get the score that you need and deserve as quickly as possible. See you in the next video. Peace.